Calling all dreamers and optimistic fools. Don't let go of your dream. Make it now. Make it all come true. Those of us with ADHD, sometimes, have you ever daydreamed? That beautiful space between sleep and wakefulness that seems ours is one of my favorite places. Why do we do this? I don't know why I do it. It took some work to understand why and it is worth it. Well, why do you do it? Do you notice that you're doing it or is it just happening? Put your experiences in the comments. And I mean, while you're there, you may as well like and subscribe. Does this look familiar to anyone? Does someone you know do this? And does it drive you crazy? Maybe after watching this video, you may see your loved one with compassion and a lot less irritation. All right, what are the benefits of this daydreaming time? When embraced, this sensation doesn't really feel like time. It feels like an opportunity to be in an uninterrupted space. This has the potential to be a quiet space for the mind to come to clarity on some things that can be a major benefit helping to effectively regulate the ADHD mind. Well now, can this be a problem? Of course. I've personally been scolded back to reality more times than I can count. Just like any tool, this daydreaming or drifting can be used as a form of dissociation and keep one stuck in an unproductive cycle. They even have a fancy term for this. Maladaptive daydreaming. People with maladaptive daydreaming have intentional, vivid, all-consuming daydreams that interfere with their daily functions. Individuals with inattentive ADHD have trouble sustaining focus. They're easily distracted and forgetful. And it often feels like the path of least resistance is to retreat to that space when the going gets tough. This just kicks the can down the road and does not promote sustainable peace and calm. Now, you don't have to have ADHD to experience maladaptive daydreaming. However, they often occur together. This channel is intended to help everyone, not just people with ADHD. Many of us have traits that are associated with ADHD without having a diagnosis of ADHD. These concepts apply to the behaviors regardless of diagnosis status. It's also important to factor in the effects of PTSD. Medical experts are beginning to better understand the correlation between PTSD symptoms and symptoms of ADHD. They often mimic each other and can occur together. So much so that in order to be given a proper diagnosis of ADHD now, a thorough screening for PTSD is becoming standard of care for accurate diagnosis. So wait, is daydreaming good or bad? Yes, it can be both. When used as a perpetual form of dissociation, daydreaming can get in the way of effective functioning within family groups and particularly within school and work environments. When you become aware of when and why you are doing this, now you have unlocked a tool that can help you find some peace and clarity. When you deliberately evaluate your thoughts, you unlock all sorts of new tools that add to your growing list of assets. These can help turn your ADHD into a superpower. Dialing in the proper implementation of this tool allows you to dream bigger and live better. So how do we dial this in? Well, it all starts with recognition. When we learn to recognize when and why we daydream, we can turn this into a tool for increasing our abundance instead of using it as a tool for a means of escape. As one with ADHD, I have found it effective to set aside a little bit of time every day intentionally to daydream. We deliberately get to choose when this meaningful time gets to play out instead of being told to snap out of it by others at an inopportune time. Intentionality is important. We take ownership of it and then it becomes an asset, not a liability. Many of us with ADHD are used to being on the defensive, mostly on account of the outside feedback we received during our formative years. We need to be careful to not let daydreaming become a source of an autopilot type pattern. It's important to take the controls. In the cockpit of an airplane, when pilots are changing who has the controls, the person taking the controls literally says the words, I have the controls. This is something that we can apply to ourselves in our daily lives. Learning to effectively pilot our ADHD allows us to get more experience out of this island earth that we are roaming. We have what we have. We may as well get the best out of it.